and ROM. RAM and ROM. RAM is random access memory and ROM is read only memory. Okay? You can kind of get an idea of what they do differently just by the terms. Random access memory is memory that is accessed randomly. It is stored and erased, stored and erased, stored and erased. And that's what you use on your uh, computer system to help it move a little quicker. But we'll talk about that in a few minutes. ROM memory is, is um, static memory. You can call RAM memory dynamic because it changes. And you can call ROM memory static because it stays the same. All right. Here is a rough idea of how they work differently to, uh, that in a more, uh, a more colloquial term, a term that you may be more familiar with. You can consider RAM memory like the whiteboard. All right? On this whiteboard, at least on the video screen, I have about from here to about here. So that's how much space I've got to write on for it to still be on video. All right? If I fill up the board, that area of the board, I have to erase and write more. Erase, write more. Erase, write more. If I had more RAM memory, if I had more whiteboard space, I could write a lot more before I'd have to start erasing. So how that affects you is if I'm writing things down and you miss something, you have less time to write it down than if I had the entire room to write, uh, write on. Okay? So this would be the equivalent of RAM memory. I can move things around, erase, write, erase, write, and so on. ROM memory you can consider like a book. You get a book off a shelf, access the information, read it, and put it back. Generally speaking, you don't go to a book, erase it, and write in your own figures. That's what we do on Wikipedia, but that's why most people don't like it as a reference. But you don't do that for most books, all right? You go to a book, get the information, it stays static. Whiteboard is dynamic, it's always changing, okay? That's the two main differences in the types of memory. There are all kinds of subcategories. In ROM, even though I've said it's static and stays the same, we have PROMs or PROMs, that's programmable. ROM memory or ROM, programmable read-only memory, meaning you have this one chip that's blank, you program it, and then it's like a book on a shelf. You have erasable, programmable, read-only memory. So that's like a book on a shelf that you can erase and rewrite and erase and rewrite. But it stays static. It doesn't, it doesn't change dynamically and it doesn't lose anything when you shut off the power. And if I didn't mention it, ROM memory needs power. There are exceptions to that, but ROM memory needs power. So if you shut off the power on your computer, you lose all your RAM memory. Okay. All right, so we have uh, all kinds of different ROM chips. We have different kinds of RAM chips, different kinds of RAM memory, all of that. But the two main categories are RAM and ROM. Uh, on your computer, you have what might be considered the brain of the computer, which is the central processing unit. What kind of uh, chip do you suppose that would be, a RAM or a ROM? No ideas? Does the central processing unit erase and change? No. Nope. The central processing unit is static information. It stays there permanently. The memory that changes in your computer is called RAM memory. That's all it's called. Inside your computer you have RAM memory and that's the memory that changes all the time. Your central processing unit is the brain of the computer. If you look at those cases underneath your desk, Okay, fine, people call that the computer. That's kind of their computer. That's their computer system. The motherboard, well, that's not really your computer. That's kind of what gives your computer its arms and legs so it kind of can spread out all over. But the central processing unit, that's the brain of your computer. When you turn on your computer, your computer knows nothing. Your central processing unit gets red and it knows what to do based on that information. And the first thing it does, it goes to your hard disk, 
to find the operating system. It needs to have that operating system to tell it, for lack of a better description, what language in which to speak to you. So the operating system, again, is kind of the language that the computer uses to communicate with you. All right? And the central processing unit is the thing that goes out and its first instruction is find that operating system. Have any of you turned on a computer that uh, uh, the hard disk was bad or it didn't have an operating system? What's the first thing that, that it said? Any? Well, an error. But if it can't find an operating system, the first thing that pops up is it says, missing operating system. Your microprocessor has to have that operating system to keep going. All right? So again, if there's anything in there that's pre-programmed like that, you can pretty much guarantee that that's a ROM chip. All right, so um, going back to RAM a little bit, we already said that, told, said what RAM is, and the more the better, but I want you to remember that everything that happens on your computer is happening in RAM memory. Your hard disk, which people sometimes refer to as memory, is not, that's not memory, that's storage. Your RAM memory is where everything takes place. When your computer freezes up because of too much activity, it's because your RAM memory is, is uh, full or it's got too much going on in it. The more RAM memory you've got, the more you can do at one time. Yes, there are limitations with other parts of your computer and your central processing unit and so on. But generally, the RAM memory is what gives your computer more capabilities. Everything that's happening is happening on, in your RAM memory. What's showing on your monitor is RAM memory. If you print something, it's happening in RAM memory. If you're scanning something, it's happening in RAM memory. When you're typing, it's happening in RAM memory. When you're editing a picture, it's happening in RAM memory. When you run Word, you double click on it, your computer goes to the hard disk, finds Word. Where does it put it? In RAM memory. You're not working in Word or any other software from the hard disk. It's loading that program into RAM memory and you're working on it from there. So now you're typing away a letter. What happens if you lose power? Gone. Your, your file that you were just working on is gone. What do you have to do? Save it. Do you have a question? Don't they do it now? Like if you lose power suddenly, it'll save it? Yes, there are. There is automatic save, but usually that's timed every 10 minutes or so. Um, they, uh, you, uh, it, I don't know of any computer system, uh, home user system, that has a constant uh, uh, every second save. Uh, I know that most software comes up has an automatic save, but you time that for every few minutes. Okay, but in other words, in, uh, in, in anyway, in order to save your documents, you save it periodically onto your hard disk. So you're essentially taking a snapshot of your uh, document and putting it onto your hard disk, and now you're working away on your uh, RAM memory again. The more RAM memory you've got, the better off you are, and a lot of times. RAM memory can be more important than your processor speed. So when you talk about wanting to upgrade your computer, yeah, you can upgrade your processor, and in, in, in some case, in many cases, you can. Some cases, you can't. But first, try the RAM memory. It's a lot cheaper, a lot easier, and it's probably going to solve the problem for you. Yes. So when do you go to save? You get saved to the ROM. No, it gets saved to the hard disk. You save the hard disk, but when you, when you go like, back and resave it. Does it rewrite that file or write it? No, it rewrites that file. Okay? You can save it as another file name, right. but if you just save, it's re it saves over the top of that old file. Okay? Um, so uh, consider uh, ROM, uh, RAM memory as uh, being a, um, a cheap, easy solution to upgrading your computer. How easy is it? You can open, anybody can do it. You have, you, you have to have zero knowledge of a computer in order to upgrade your RAM memory. Open up the side of the computer, which is usually the hardest part, because most manufacturers put some sort of weird combination on the, on the uh, side that takes three hands in order to get in there. But once you've opened up the side, it's real simple. You'll see slots in there with RAM memory, and I'm going to show you some samples of RAM memory in a minute. I'm going to show you what a motherboard looks like. And you'll be able to pull out that RAM memory, go down to Best Buy or where have you, say, you see this? I want two more just like this, and they'll help you. And then when you get them, you plug them into your computer, and you're done. It's that simple. Didn't used to be that way. Used to be RAM memory was, um, in the old, old, old days of computers, like 1980, 
we had a motherboard with nothing on it and you even had to get a separate card to plug in your keyboard and mouse um, and we would get this separate uh, plug-in card for RAM memory and your RAM memory the card was blank then you would go and get these tubes, these anti-static tubes that had dozens of integrated circuits or chips, you know those uh, black spidery looking things, black plastic with the little legs on it that you've probably seen in radios and televisions all that. Anyway, those are the chips and you had to take those chips one by one and plug them into these cards. And that gets old real fast. And it works a lot like Christmas tree lights. You finish, you plug in the card, and inevitably it doesn't work. Why? Because one chip is bad. Either one chip is bad or when you plugged it in the leg, one of the 24 legs came bent out and is not making contact or you've got it in angled or you missed the slot by one set of legs. Something. And then you'd have to go through the whole thing and either fix, find the problem, fix it, and keep trying and trying. Just like uh, an old set of Christmas tree lights, you know, they don't turn on and you got to find the one that's bad. Well, that's the way it was with RAM memory back then. Thank God those days are over with. But that's the way it used to be. As time went on, we got uh, modules that we like we have today, and they kept getting better and better. There were times where you had to get, when you in the early days of modules, you had to get two or four of the exact same type of module. You couldn't get different brand, you couldn't get different amounts, they had to be identical. And I mean identical, right down to the same production line. It was that specific. As time went on, it got a little easier and easier and easier, and finally today it couldn't be a lot easier than what we've got now. Other than the RAM memory being on the outside of the computer. And uh, laptops are not a lot different. Pretty much just as easy. There's a slot on the back of the computer, or a door on the back of the computer. You open it up and you can add more or replace what you've got with a higher amount of RAM memory. Okay? Real simple. RAM memory is not terribly difficult. But again, consider that before you um, uh, purchase a, um, or decide to upgrade your computer. All right, um, we've um, talked about RAM some. Now let's move on to the uh, uh, central processing unit or the micro. Uh, in the early, early days of computers, we're talking about 79 and 80, the very first microprocessor that was put into a PC 